Thank you, Emily. That was beautiful and always a wonderful way to start the morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. My name is Annalise. I am one of the pastors here at Braddock Street along with Pastor Jason. And here at Braddock Street, we strive to be followers of Jesus, loving God in worship, loving others in small groups, and serving the world in mission. We're so glad that you all are joining us for worship today. There are a few things we want you to know as we get started. If you are new to us this morning, you'll find a green card that looks like this in the pew rack in front of you. We hope you'll take a moment to fill that out and you can leave it for us in the offering plate when those come around so that we can get to know you a little bit better. And if you have a prayer request this morning, there are blue cards in the same pew rack in front of you, um, which you can fill out. And during our first hymn, our ushers will pick these up so that we can pray over them all together later on in our worship service. We also want to say good morning to everybody who's with us online. We're so glad that you all are here. Welcome. Um, please let us know that you're there and worship with us. And if you are new to us and you're online, you'll find a digital copy of our sign-in card right there linked in the Facebook comments. We hope you'll take a second to go ahead and fill that out for us. And if you have a prayer request, you can leave it right there in the Facebook comments. Now I'd like to invite you all to stand as you are able and join in our call to worship. <coughs> All are welcome in the house of the Lord. Find here the hospitality of compassionate fellowship. Worship with holy hands and pure hearts. We lift up the name of the Lord. We are adopted into the family of Christ. We will rejoice joyful voices to our God of love. Please join in our opening prayer. Holy God, we enter this time of worship with minds filled with the busyness of life. Help us shed the dust of our activities, relaxing in the knowledge that you claim us just as you promised. Give us wisdom to follow your word today. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
A scripture today from the Hebrew Bible, Second Chronicles, the first chapter, verses 1 through 12. Solomon, son of David, strengthened himself in his kingdom. The Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Solomon summoned all Israel, the commanders of the thousands and of the hundreds, the judges, and all the leaders of all Israel, the heads of families. Then Solomon and the whole assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for God's tent of meeting, which Moses the servant of the Lord had made in the wilderness, was there. But David had brought the ark of God up from Kariah Jerim to the place that David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. Moreover, the bronze altar that Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, had made was there in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Solomon and the assembly inquired at it. Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tent of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I should give you. Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love to my father David, and have made me succeed him as king. O Lord God, let your promise to my father David now be fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people, for who can rule this great people of yours? God answered Solomon, Oh, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may rule my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. The word of God for the people of God.
Wonderful choir, thank you so much. Beautiful piece for today and for the word that we're about to share. I am Jason Dooley, your new lead pastor. So glad to be here. It's a wonderful church. You probably know that about yourselves, right? And it's a new beginning for you, for me, and for us together in ministry. So today we start a summer worship series called Pray First, because I honestly want to invite you to pray as we begin this new season of ministry at Braddock Street Church. What do you do when you first come in to the church? On a Sunday morning, you probably come in and you look for somebody that you know or you find your seat. I'm inviting you to add to that. Say a silent prayer. Pray for our church first thing when you come in each Sunday that you make it here. And let's pray together right now. Lord, give us wisdom. May your word be a light along our decision-making paths. And may you be the one that we look to, no matter what's happening in our lives. So we can trust you, O oh God. Make it so in the name of Christ. Amen. Once there was a contest in which two men were called to recite the 23rd Psalm on stage. One man was a famous actor and the other a country preacher. The actor recited the psalm in a powerful way and when he finished the audience cheered and even asked for an encore that they might enjoy his rich baritone voice even more. Then the other man, the old preacher, repeated the same words, the very same words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But when he finished there was not a sound in the room. Instead, the large audience sat in a deep mood of devotion and prayer. And then the actor stood up suddenly and he said, I, I have a confession to make. He said, the difference between what I said and what you've just heard from my old friend is this. I know the psalm, but my friend knows the shepherd. Prayer is that pathway to knowing the shepherd. Prayer is that path in your own life to deepen your relationship with the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Is that your experience of prayer in your life? I actually want to just ask you, maybe it's a helpful question, uh, or maybe you'll take one like this to your own devotional time this week. What does prayer look like? for you these days? What is your relationship with prayer? Well, prayers are not just for Sunday at church anymore, and it's more than mean, uh, just a blessing at mealtime, okay? Prayer is, think of it this way, prayer is for life. Prayer is a way of life, and if that's the case, I wonder if you might want to weave more prayer into the daily activities of your life. I, I hope you'll find during these sermons this summer some examples, perhaps even some exercises that you might want to try on for size and see that you might take up more prayer in your life. So to help with that, I want to give you something. I like to be a giving person. Uh, if you don't get anything else out of this message, at least you get to take home this, our gift to you, a small prayer bracelet. I know a number of you already picked them up on the way in. They're in these baskets in the gathering space on the way out. It says prayers up. Just a simple reminder to send up a prayer. And if you're like me, uh, I honestly, I don't wear these very often. I'm going to wear them this summer. Uh, but you might take one, even if you're not going to wear it, and find a different way for it to be a reminder. Some people will hang them on their closet door. And then you see that when you're getting ready and it reminds you to pray. Uh, somebody else might put it on their bathroom sink counter. And then when you first get up in the morning, you're reminded, send up a prayer. If that's not already your habit. Another thing that encourages me, I hope it encourages you, are these wonderful examples in the Bible of praying persons. Somebody who's very faithful in prayer, King Solomon, is whom we're looking at today. I think Solomon's prayer is especially important. It's certainly important for me. I've been praying it over the last couple of weeks, given this new opportunity that I have to be your lead pastor here. So I've been praying, Lord, give me wisdom. Yes, Lord, I pray. I want to offer verse 10 for you again. And 
Let's hear it again. Give me now wisdom, knowledge, to go out and to come in before this people. Give me now wisdom. I, I love that phrase, and that prayer seems to settle upon me very comfortably. I, I look to God to be my source of wisdom. And I think about why Solomon may have been moved to pray that kind of prayer. I'll give you just a little bit of the context there. The story of Solomon becoming king over all Israel is a story that involved, <clears throat> how shall I say, some political tension, all right? In this story, there's a suggestion of opposition. In his day, not everyone was in agreement with the current administration. Can you imagine a time when people might experience a little tension around politics or when somebody may not be exactly happy with leadership. We understand. I'm just trying to help you get into the biblical world for a minute. But I think that's part of the backdrop for Solomon to have this prayer on his heart. He knows the heavy things, the tension that's in the air. He seems to be able to take the temperature of the room as he comes in to his administration at the beginning there. And it's pretty much business as usual, by the way. If there's ever some sort of tension or some people not happy or people have differing opinions, that's business as usual for human beings, right? Then something kind of unusual happens. In this exchange of prayer, Solomon experiences God showing up showing up in a way that for me it seems unusual because it sounds like that uh, proverbial genie out of the bottle who says, I'll grant you any wish. I mean, God comes to Solomon like that. Ask anything your heart desires. I find that very unusual because quite honestly, God's never said that to me. And nowhere else in the scripture do I find God saying that. Ask anything, really. And then something even more surprising happens. You know what else is unusual here is Solomon's response. Solomon, he seems to do something that most people wouldn't do. It's surprising to me because, well, I know about human nature. Believe me, I come from a long line of human beings. Uh, human nature, my own experience of human nature, it tends to run in the selfish direction, right? And it's shocking to me that Solomon does not demonstrate that selfishness. He doesn't have that attitude. He doesn't demonstrate greed or any of those things that he might have wanted to when God said, ask me anything. Instead, he simply and with a humble heart asks for wisdom. You know, I love that. I, I want a heart like Solomon's heart. Solomon reveals a strong relationship with God in his life. I, I think Solomon in this one sentence, this one verse 10 prayer, demonstrates a spiritual maturity that I would want to have, that, that I think all believers we can aspire to. So wisdom is worth pursuing. And if that's true, then wisdom is certainly worth praying for. Do you pray for wisdom in your regular life? Do you pray for wisdom in decisions that you'll make on a daily basis or in the relationships that matter so much to you? Yes, we should all pray for wisdom. We need it so much now. Well, what is wisdom? The word smart or wise or wisdom shows up in the scripture 375 times, which simply says to me, it's a big deal. God thinks it's a big deal. And what is it specifically? I'll use this definition. Wisdom is the ability to discern what is true and right. Friends, in the times that we live in, we need wisdom now more than ever. You know, sometimes you can understand what wisdom is when it's absent. Without wisdom, people shipwreck marriages. They run their relationships into the ground. Without wisdom, people sabotage their own careers, squander their wealth and resources. Without wisdom, our collective lives suffer as well. Congregations may suffer. Communities suffer. Without wisdom, nations suffer as well. And it's not hard to understand the lack of wisdom when we notice it conspicuously absent. But with wisdom, what a difference. With wisdom, people flourish. With wisdom, you can build a meaningful life that is also fruitful and faithful to God. With wisdom, you can live in right relationship 
with other people in your life. With wisdom, we follow the shepherd and deepen our relationship with God through Christ. Let me turn a page, though, here, because I was having a conversation this week with one of you about the times that we live in and how hard it is to be church. And I said something like this. I, for me, wisdom, I think, is holding heavy things lightly. Heavy things held lightly. I, I take them very seriously, but I also want to approach it with a lightness of being. Because when I know people talking about heavy things gets difficult, is that sometimes we're so apt to want to prove our point. Sometimes we, we hold heavy things so tightly that in sharing our perspective, it's like a punch on the nose for the other person, as if we're always trying to justify ourselves or our feelings. But what I think for myself, what I think God has called me here to do is to help lower the volume level. Because people can get so amped up about heavy things, and I get it. It matters, and I get it how we get emotional. In fact, when I was younger, I was a little bit more vocal. I was even more <clears throat> stubborn in the things that I believed, in my own opinions about things. And you know what changed me? You want to know how God changed me? Marriage and children <laughs> and church. I mean, having all these people in my life, and I, I start to see how God is at work in people who are different from me and different perspectives, and I, I come to celebrate that, not to challenge it. But there's tension in our times. Can I just say that? Just as in the time of King Solomon. And what I think my work will be here is to help lower the volume on both sides of heavy issues. Why? So that we can meet in the middle to do the work of Christ together, regardless of how we feel and what we think and what differences we may have. And some people may not have a high view of the middle, but let me just share this with you, all right? I believe Jesus stands with us right there in the middle, between the extremes, calling us from either side of heavy issues to come together to do the work of the gospel together. I think that's really important because, listen, these are tough times. I think it just got tougher last night. There was a shooting at a political rally, an assassination attempt. And I think we feel the strain. All of us know that story by now, and, and we feel the heaviness. There's tension out there. And I wonder so often when we have these violent outbursts, what's going on? I think sometimes people may feel there's little they can do to change the situation we're in. And so it's heavy, and people feel that tension. I think Solomon also knew a heaviness. But at the same time, Solomon welcomed, or he rose to the occasion that great expectations were upon him. His father, King David, as I mentioned, he had accomplished much. At the same time, in that administration of David's, things ended up going really poorly. There was family strife, a lot of tension and dissension in the ranks, and even bloodshed. So Solomon was feeling all of those heavy things. Friends, we live in difficult and tense times, but there are great expectations upon us as a church. As Braddock Street Church, we are a leader in our community. We are a congregation that's a leading congregation in this Virginia conference. So let us lead by example to pray first and to pray for wisdom. Wisdom is to discern what is true and right, which means how to live together in Christ, not giving in to anger, not with these outbursts of opinions, no hate and no self-centered attitudes. This is the heart of the prayer of King Solomon. Give us now wisdom, O Lord. One other quick thought on that I had last night after the news broke. I thought about that play, Hamilton. You remember a few years ago, that historical play on Broadway was so popular, Hamilton. There was a poignant line in it that says, history has its eyes on you. Think about that. I believe right now, history has its eyes on you and me as believers. People outside are wondering, well, how will people of faith respond? How will we show the wise and right path forward? Or think about us as a church. History has its eyes on us, Braddock Street United Methodist Church, as a 
church with a leadership position, how will we respond? Will we pray for wisdom? Will we rise to the occasion? But more than history, let me say this. Most of all, God has God's eyes on us. How shall we live the faith? First, pray for wisdom in times such as these. I think a prayer for wisdom simply is a prayer of discernment. And we pray for wisdom that God might give us the love with which to show others and the courage to live this faith wisely. Very popular Christian author Richard Foster has a wonderful book on prayer entitled Prayer. By the way, I first met Richard Foster right here in this sanctuary some 15 years ago. You all were hosting a district event where he was the keynote speaker. He's a great spiritual encourager. Now, I didn't write this down verbatim, but I know something that he said stayed with me. It's lifted up in my heart frequently. He talked about discerning prayer as an experienced sense of God, a kind of inner hearing, an inner spiritual hearing. That's what discerning prayer is, to pursue wisdom, to practice a way of listening and waiting for God and sensing God's presence. These are all part of the ways we can live into Solomon's prayer. Lord, give me wisdom. And I think we need it now more than ever. So I pray for wisdom myself. I pray for us as a congregation to seek wisdom in our ministry together so that we can grow together in Christ. And when we face tough issues, we can discern God's way forward. I'll give you one other quick example about prayer in my life. So last week, I'm in my office here unpacking boxes of books. Okay, I don't know if it's an occupational hazard, but I think I've got too many books and too few shelves, right? So I just have all these books. I'm not sure where I'd put them. And um, there's a knock at my door, and it's our youth director, Jed Markwood. He said, I dropped in because I've got a book for you. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) one more book. It won't matter. Uh, But this was interesting. He said, I heard you quote C.S. Lewis in your first sermon. He's probably important to you. I was like, he's a great writer. I love it. Now, I'm not going to quote C.S. Lewis every time, my friends. But I wanted to tell you this. He hands me a journal. It's an empty journal filled with, like every other page, a C.S. Lewis quote. And the first one. I took this as God's interruption, right? The very first quote from C.S. Lewis is on prayer in the presence of God. And so I want to share it with you now and put it on the screen. We may ignore, but we can nowhere evade the presence of God. The world is crowded with Him. He walks everywhere incognito, and the incognito is not always hard to find. The real labor is to remember to attend, in fact, to come awake, still more, to remain awake, C.S. Lewis. It connects for me because wisdom is that, that mindful recognition, that awakening to God's presence everywhere, even in tough times. Christ, the living Christ, is with us. We are not alone. And so wisdom is to, again, usher us into the very presence of God that we might follow our good shepherd more closely, especially when times are heavy. So let's pray now. Oh Lord, help us to live faithfully in these difficult days. Grant us wisdom that we may walk in your love and seek to be peacemakers towards everyone. Oh God, shepherd us and guide us to make wise choices in our lives, in our relationships. And Lord God, we do pray for those who are grieving after yesterday's shooting and for those who are injured. We pray for healing and we pray for peace. Hear us now in our own hearts as we lift up to you our joys and concerns or name quietly those whom we are praying for. Dr. Curtis Thwing and family, Harold Ogg and Lucinda Angel, David Andre, Diane Lively, Becky Benazio, and Sean Russell, just married. The family of Bill Russell, Danny Bromley, William Hubbard, Bill Clement, Jan Kelleher, John Lobb, Bertel Wamaly, Ralph and Dee Grimm, Shirley Peterson, 
Cadence Grimm, Lynette Harmon, Melissa Schatzer, Gwen Evers, Carol Sperling, Louise Reed at the celebration of her 90th birthday, Barbara Devers, Liz Eppinger, Holly Fuller, Landy, Carol, Mary, Mavis. Lord, we intercede and ask your spirit to minister with those in need. We also lift up prayers for peace here and around the world. You are the Prince of Peace, O God, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, who taught us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen. It is important to us here at Braddock Street that you all know what kind of wonderful things we are able to do and support because of your generosity. And one of the things that you all as a congregation has decided to support with your giving is Wheels for Wellness. It is an organization here in Winchester that is deeply important because it allows us um, to make sure that folks who otherwise would not be able to get safely to and from medical appointments can do so. I have a, a friend who it volunteers for Wheels for Wellness and her schedule is busy. She showed us one night and we were like, wow, that's a lot of driving um, because it's, a, it's important and it is a felt need in our community. So thank you for being the kind of congregation that cares about your neighbors and their health and to make sure that they have a safe way to and from their medical appointments. We'll invite our ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering as we hear together this offertory.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give with joy into your kingdom today and ask that you would bless these gifts and us to your service. Amen. We invite you to remain standing as you are able and join us in affirming our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'd like to invite Nancy to come on up. You may remember on Pastor Kirk's last Sunday, he left a stole here on the table. This stole is a part of a set, and they all match the paraments that we have, and also the Reredos, that piece of artwork under the cross. These were made specifically for our church and for our lead pastor. And so we get to celebrate today by handing over that stole as a sign of leadership of this congregation to Jason. Today, because we are welcoming Jason and the Dooleys, we celebrate now with you, Pastor Jason, and we are so glad that you have been appointed to serve here with us in ministry. You have been sent to serve as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of the sacraments, and a sustainer of the love of Christ among us. Amen. Would you all please join us in prayer? Lord, bless the ministries of our church. We thank you for the variety of gifts you have given all of us, and we ask that your spirit will be with our in ministry here in Christ. Amen. Can we thank Jason and welcome him? Thank you, Miss Nancy. Thank you. Amen. Our close hymn is number 454, Open My Eyes That I May See.
has been a joy to be in worship with you today. Thank you for being here. As a reminder, right after the service over in the fellowship hall, we are going to have a reception to welcome the Duallys into our congregation. We hope you'll come by. This was not like a formal, you needed to RSVP thing or anything like that. Just come over and join us. We hope that you will. Now, Pastor Jason, would you please give us a benediction? Yes. I'm so looking forward to the reception, and thank you all so much for such a warm welcome and everything. Now receive the benediction. Wherever you go, may God go with you. Whatever you need, may God provide for you. Whenever you fail, may God forgive you. And whenever you lay down for the last time, may God raise you up forevermore in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>